full range of financial services and investment advice. A.G. Edwards, trusted advice, exceptional service. And by Oppenheimer Funds, because solid investment performance and sound financial planning go hand in hand. Produced Friday, December 20th. Our panelists are Mary Farrell, Michael Holland, and Brian Rogers. Tonight's special guest is Diana D. Brooks, President and CEO, Sotheby's Holdings Incorporated. Good evening, I'm Louis Rukeyser. This is Wall Street Week. Welcome back. Well, this was the week when the television industry announced a new system for labeling its own programs. The labels will not contain, as you might hope, such possibly useful appellations as lousy, tasteless, boring, a real ego trip for Roseanne, or same basic plot they used in three earlier episodes this season, skip it and take your dog for a nice walk. No, these ratings will simply say for which age group the program is considered suitable. And since the producers and presenters will be in charge of the ratings, they will be fulfilling every actor's dream by writing their own reviews. Some critics are complaining bitterly that what they really wanted in such ratings was more detailed information, akin to that tested in Canada, that would warn prospective viewers if a program was going to be high on specifically violence, sex, and or bad language. Well, around here, as you know, we live to serve. So let me set an example for the TV industry tonight by being right up front about our own program. For the truth is, anybody talking about the American economy these days is going to be dealing with an awful lot of all of the above. Violence? Have you watched what's been happening on Wall Street this month? More carnage than in any two Schwarzenegger and Stallone films combined, even if you throw in a couple of episodes of The Roadrunner. In the first two weeks, Feeding off some downbeat comments from Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, the market battered investors with a loss in the Dow of more than 200 points. And all the unshaven thugs who have been predicting financial murder rubbed their hands in evil glee. This week, the good guys struck back with equally brutal force. Striking with the heaviest weekly volume in the history of the New York Stock Exchange, they rocketed prices up by nearly 180 Dow points, leaving a scene of devastation and confusion on all sides. And was there some serious economic change to justify all this gratuitous violence? You must be kidding. Let's face it, it certainly wasn't fit for innocent children. Sex? What else can you say about a business that keeps shamelessly indulging in things like naked options? and that has no compunctions about recommending that decent grandmothers who up to now have lived exemplary lives might want to fund their retirements with a program of treasury strips to help get scheming politicians out of debt. Let's hope their grandchildren never find out. So I suppose the teenagers shouldn't watch either. As for bad language, all over the world, people are still complaining about Chairman Greenspan's passing up of a marvelous opportunity to keep his mouth shut. Consider a postcard I got this week from Gene Hitton, a viewer in Roanoke, Virginia. Talk about your Tickle Me Elmo doll, he wrote. If there were one named Don't Speak Allen, there would be such overwhelming demand by investors, selling curbs would have to be initiated. Well, heck, I think the children could handle that part of the program, but I'm very concerned about their parents. And don't say you weren't warned. We tonight will look at lovelier things, some of the most beautiful objects available for very special gifts from the same people who last year gave us a world preview of Jacqueline Onassis' goodies. But first, let's go where no self-respecting viewer ever should and see what happened in Wall Street in the week just past. And as the Dow Jones Industrial Average indicates, the combination of slower economic news, but a still decent profits picture, aided on Friday by the quarterly fun and games connected with the expiration of options and futures, sent the Dow up nearly 180 points to 6484.40.
but big gains in the blue chip indexes were not matched in the broader averages as a late week sell off in the technology stocks kept Nasdaq in check. Our L's were tied up helping Santa, and not a one changed a prediction on the next three months. The price of a barrel of oil, which we highlighted last week, moved up over $25, and the dollar was mixed. The price of gold continued to stall beneath $370 an ounce. The prices for frankincense and myrrh were not immediately available. Mike Holland, last week you switched your else vote to bullish, just in time to catch the rally. <laughs> Possibly you touched it off. Why are you on the plus side now? Well, uh, the, you just referred, Lou, to the continuing slower economic news. Uh, we, we, we have had wonderful inflation news for the last several years, and, and Alan Greenspan is to be thanked for that. I would also thank him for the opportunity to jump to the bullish camp, having created the sell-up, which he did. He, he created the opportunity for you because, <laughs> because prices retreated enough? Well, actually, uh, not, not to belabor the point, he did unearth a huge number of people who previously had been quietly bearish. Uh, we still have a lot of negative sentiment out there. That's what this market has had for the last six years, which is a lot of underlying skepticism. It's shown itself in each of the different uh, enthusiasms, to use his word. Um, years ago, it was the biotech stocks. A few, uh, several, a few years ago, it was the inter internet stocks. We've had IPOs that have, uh, you know, been burned and, and, and thrown out. Uh, so now that you're bullish, what are you buying? Well, I like what your guest had to say last week. The, the uh, international oils have been wonderful investments. I think they will continue to be investments. I believe that a lot of the blue chip stocks, which have done well, uh, will continue to lead this parade. Uh, the technology stocks are not dead yet. My, thing, uh, my thinking would include also uh, some of the uh, uh, very underpriced large cap stocks. Mary Fowl, you've got a new bull on your side. Does it make you feel better or worse <laughs> to have more support? <laughs> I like having some company uh, there because it is a very nervous group of investors and I sympathize. You know, the market has had a lot of up and down days of multi, you know, dozens points and I think that investors should be cautious but I think there is an overdone nervousness. What are you buying these days? Uh, I think it's, it's getting harder because prices are higher, but I do see a broadening from that narrow group of stocks, notably technology, that's led the crowd. Uh, we still like technology, one of the two growth areas of the 90s, companies like Seagate, Compaq, Cisco. If you want to be more conservative, a company like PepsiCo, which has had a setback here, and I think you get a good price. Uh, the big technology stocks led by Intel and Microsoft retreated a bit at the end of the week, although they did very well earlier. Has their time passed? Is it time to look elsewhere in the technology area? No, I think they're going to continue to have some volatility because they perform so well. But one problem we face in the economy is slow growth, which is, can be healthy, but it means it's hard for corporate earnings to grow fast. So one area of true growth is technology, not just for this year and next, but well beyond. And I think that's what's being reflected. And as it becomes harder and harder to find growth, people are willing to pay more for genuine growth. Ryan Rogers, your colleagues have the Christmas spirit, but you don't have to. You can be Scrooge. Tell us we're all wrong and it's all downhill from here. Lou, I was thinking I'd either be Scrooge or the Grinch. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the rally will continue through year end, but I, I suspect after the, the January inflows uh, hit the marketplace that there'll be some tough sledding sometime in, in the first half of January inflows? Is that a weather forecast? Uh, th mean? Those are inflows into mutual funds coming from the various retirement plans. So what, you're talking about a couple of weeks in January? I, I, I think through the through most of the month of January, the market should do fine, but I, I suspect that as earnings reports come in, there, there may be some tendency to, for disappointment. So you're, you're focusing on uh, slower growth in earnings than people expect? I, I think earnings will be slower in 97 than many people expect. Would you be selling stocks at this point, then, if you think we were topping out? No, I, I think you really just have to be more selective and, and look for things that offer really interesting opportunities, perhaps some things that are damaged goods uh, that look relatively inexpensive. I don't think it's time to panic. I think you just have to be selective. Selective for us. Uh, I, I, I'd select uh, or recommend people look at companies like ITT, uh, Newmont Mining, uh, Willis Caroon, uh, an insurance brokerage, stocks that haven't done well that look relatively underpriced relative to most everything else. What they have in common is that they haven't done well. That's right. But do you just pick anything that looks like it hasn't done well, or does it have to have other questions? No, we, we, <laughs> <laughs> no we, we, I, I look for things that haven't done well where, where I think there's some reason to believe that things may be different in the next, uh, the next year or year and a half. All righty. At the end of November, in our annual Uncle Lou Goes Christmas Shopping Program, we showed you an array of gifts that we expected to be hot this season. And judging from the runaway success since then of items like Tickle Me Elmo, Holiday Barbie, and Nintendo 64, it seemed to be pretty good advice. 
Now let's dream a little and turn to the really big outlays for boys and girls who have been not just good in 1996, but downright sensational. My guest tonight is the woman who runs the world's largest auction house. A year ago at this time, she gave us the first look at the goodies that dazzled the planet this year as the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Collection. Before we meet her again, let's look at what she's brought this time. Again, some of the best goodies in the house. To see, once and for all, whether you agree with the very rich of this world when they smile at this time of year and say, it's nice to be able to afford this stuff. For those who believe that less is more, Sotheby's will be auctioning off the world's smallest Rembrandt, this remarkably detailed character study.